Welcome back to Wake Up With Chatter. According to a recent study, nearly 20% of patients diagnosed with COVID-19 develop a new mental illness like anxiety or depression within 90 days of their diagnosis. The research conducted looked at the health records of over 62,000 coronavirus patients in this country. For more on these findings, we're joined by psychologist Dr. Wilfred Van Gork. Uh, great to have you on this morning. What do you think is the reason behind this? Good morning. Well, I'm not surprised by the findings because I think with COVID, there are so many multiple pathways to neuropsychiatric complications. First of all, just the emotional reaction to having a potentially life-threatening illness. That's number one, being confined to being inside. Number two, there's so many ways COVID affects the brain from direct uh, infection of the neuron, that can be one. People can have various complications such as hypoxia, an interruption of the uh, oxygen to the brain that can cause memory impairment. Um, just so many avenues to cause impairment plus the emotional component. So for it to be one out of five, it's not surprising that uh, that figure exists. Uh, do you expect that these new mental illnesses are going to be lifelong or, or potentially once this pandemic is over and people get back to normal life, some of it may actually you know, recede a bit. And, and even the, the physical aspects, as you we were talking about what the virus actually does to your brain, do you think that that may potentially go away as well? I think for the majority of patients, uh, the emotional disorders will recede and they will return to probably normalcy. The anxiety, the depression will improve and those can be easily treated and not necessarily easily treated, but those can definitely be treated. For the neuropsychiatric components, such as the uh, memory impairment that may come from hypoxia and so forth, there will be a subset of patients for whom the results are more lasting and could last months, years, or permanent, but they will be definitely a subset and in the minority. Are there any treatments available? Well, for the depression, the anxiety, those in theory would respond to standard treatments for depression and anxiety. For the other neuropsychiatric treatments, um, there are not specific treatments other than mostly, uh, number one, accurate diagnosis. Number two, uh, time is the great healer. So if there's memory impairment secondary to hypoxia, the brain in general heals itself and we get the greatest healing and improvement in the first two years after injury to the brain. So for those patients, it's a matter of waiting it out in time. Uh, it's so fascinating, uh, at least initially, this virus, some had compared it to the flu. Do we see anything in terms of the, the effects on the brain with the flu like we're seeing with COVID-19? No, not really, not with the flu. Uh, the flu doesn't really affect the brain. There are some infectious illnesses that, uh, like encephalitis that can infect the brain but not with the flu. The flu is nothing like COVID in terms of brain function. Uh, do you expect, you know, are you seeing this with people um, who are just the severe cases? Um, I've seen some reports that people who are even asymptomatic are still getting this kind of brain fog, um, you know, as they're describing it. What are you seeing amongst some of your patients and what do these numbers show? I'm seeing uh, patients who report brain fog in those, some who are asymptomatic and some who are only mildly symptomatic. Um, I have one patient who reports uh, only mild physical symptoms, but very prominent headaches and very prominent moodiness, L depression, anxiety, mood swings all over the place accompanied with these severe headaches that have even sent him to the emergency room. Uh, so the severity of the neuropsychiatric component doesn't necessarily correlate with the severity of physical symptoms. Um, any advice for people right now who are struggling, perhaps mentally, um, with, this, with this pandemic, and just even if you don't have the virus, just any, any words of advice for people right now out there stressed and feeling depressed themselves? 
Well, uh, for those who are worried and those even who may have uh, the virus but uh, who are isolating, stay social through um, Zoom, FaceTime, Skype, and so forth. Stay in touch with others. Stay on a regular sleep-wake cycle if you can. Um, stay on a regular meal cycle, same meal time every day. That helps. Keep your windows open, a lot of light. Try and... Uh, get physical exercise to the best you're physically able. All these things promote good mental health. And if you were to get the virus, going into it with better mental health will probably lead to a better prognosis. All right, uh, really great advice and insight. Thank you so much, psychologist Dr. Wilfred Van Gorp. Really appreciate it.